Hello. How are you? Give a thumbs up or a thumbs down. <laughs> Excellent. We'll wait and see if anyone else joins us on this uh, early New Year's Eve. Hello, how are you? Nice to see you. My wife will be here in just a few seconds. I'll, I'll sign you in. Excellent, excellent. That's right. I know. I always wonder, like, are you? Um, what causes you to be such a number when we when you sign in? Uh, well, we're, we're we're members of Skokie Valley, and mm -hmm. uh, so uh, that that's the main alley. Uh, and. and uh, But what what Zoom do you do where you're two four two zero three five? Right, that's always what you are when you sign in. Oh, <laughs> uh, that wherever we go in, that number comes up, and we can rename it. Oh, I some place I could get that number and put it in permanently for renaming, but I don't know where it is, and so this is the way it goes. It's okay. I think maybe that's a, a, an alternative for those who have prison records. <laughs> I thought maybe you were like a spy or something, you know, <laughs> that was your code name. <laughs> it's, just, I, it's part of the mystery of the system. <laughs> there you go. Hi, Nina. Oh, I didn't know Hi. you have a, a dog. We have two. Oh, wow. This is Diamond. <laughs> Say hi. Oh, hi, Diamond. Oh, he's so cute. Yeah. And we have Ivy is probably with Avery right now. <laughs> How old, is, how old is the dog? This guy is two and the other one is one. They're the same breed, so they look a lot alike. Uh-huh. So they an age, yeah. You know, They're our, our COVID sanity. Are these, is it something in the nature of a collie or what? They're they Cavalier King Charles Spaniels. Spaniel. Oh. They're, he's a 15 pound bundle of fluff and <laughs> wants to be next to me on me right i don't know if you can see it but he's like race, resting on the computer right now oh, so so sweet. here comes the other one she'll be up here in a minute too they, oh no she's going to her spot they like to learn with me that is so nice. i was just talking to a lady who was saying that she loves her dogs because they're always children. And I was like, I think that's why I don't want a dog. I have enough children. <laughs> and she said, you'll see one day. We got our first dog when Ari was, let's see, he was probably eight or nine, maybe. Oh, so you and were Mira, Yeah, Tani was two or three. So we, and we've had dogs for 30 years. So I guess Ari was younger. Well, no, what he's, yeah, he was like nine. Wow. Yep. And one of our older, our old dog died on April 2nd, which was kind of sad. And the, the, our, the first of these came on May 22nd and this, this one came September 4th. And they have definitely made being home and <laughs> yaw, I guess you better. She knows yeah. we're talking about her. <laughs> yeah. He is a tall, oh, he's such he's a cop. This is a he, the other one's a she. She's over, she has a, a little nest where she likes to hang out. And they're both ready for bed now, so. Hmm. Very nice. Yeah. Maybe we'll give it one more minute, but I assume it will be a small crowd tonight. Um, everyone must be going to their New Year's Eve parties. <laughs> <laughs> Were you on last week? No, last week um, I uh, I'm also doing my chaplaincy internship. Every Maharat student has to complete a unit of chaplain education, and um, so I I tried to be a good uh, Jewish contributor to my group, and I took the Christmas Eve and Christmas Day shifts. Nice. So I wasn't available last last week, but I tried to come on and it nothing happened. So oh I no, I guess there probably was a message, but I being me didn't read it so it's fine you know, I found it a tad confusing as well I think that Karen uh Netter the yeah. director 
at Sichuan um, was away, and so she was very organized, and she had everything set, like set to send out very early. Um, wow. So everything to me looked a little different than normal. But okay. Uh, uh oh. Well, I hope a lot of people didn't try to join last week, but here I am. So <laughs> hey, I just realized I have low battery, so I may um, may have to switch to my phone at some point. Okay. Just seeing I'm on 16%. Ooh. Oh, wow. All the more reason to, I guess, jump in here. Um, I'm, gonna, I, I'm going to share the, um, I apologize, because Karen was away, I was not able to get her the source sheet in any kind of timely fashion, but I'm po posting the link for anyone who wants it, but I'll share my screen also, but that way you could have it if you want it later. Um, I think it's interesting that this year, Parsha Fayichli overlaps with this New Year's, you know, uh, relatively, obviously it's not Shabbat, but that tomorrow New Year's Day is the day before we read by Yichli, because I think there's something about like resolute New Year's resolutions and goal setting that I think overlaps with some of the themes in this week's parsha, um, and how Yaakov Avinu approaches his um, death in this week's parsha. So I'm going to share the screen. I never did that in my hand. Let's see. Hopefully this works. Like a thousand windows open. There we go. Uh, so the the parsha opens before we jump into our pasuk, which is right in the middle, uh, towards the end. The parsha opens by telling us that Yaakov is 147 years old, um, and that he has spent the last 17 years living in Egypt, reunited with all of his children. Right uh, in last week's parsha, when we see the re, uh, the um, the reunion. Sorry, that word escaped me for a second. Um, you know, that's 17 years ago. Um, and he sensed that the end of his life was near. And so he gathers his children together and he gives them brachot, which is like a whole fascinating um, parak unto itself that we could explore maybe next year. Um, and he says goodbye. And so that's where we are. He's had his deathbed goodbye. Um, and we move to um, to this pasuk where it says, uh, Yaakov banav, raglav al hamita. So when Joseph, uh, when Jacob finished his instructions to his sons, he drew his feet into the bed, uh, which I already think is just such a beautiful image, right? To picture sort of an older, frail person sitting, you know, obviously his feet were on the ground to talk to his children. And then when he's done, he draws himself back into the bed to lie down sort of Cozy is how I'm picturing it. Vayigva, um, and he expires. Vayasef elamav, and he's gathered to his people. So I think this is a very powerful and, and beautiful pasuk about what it could mean to die. Um, you know, as I do my chaplaincy at the hospital, you see lots of different kinds of deaths, right? Traumatic young people dying in a car accident versus sort of this really beautiful idea of having your whole family around you and being gathered into your people at the end. So I was, I was um, drawn to this pasuk and I was surprised to learn that Rashi makes this wild claim on the pasuk, right? He notes the, the verbs, vayigva, to be expired, vaya, safe, and to be gathered. And he points out, Vimita Lona Amrabo. It never says that he died. The Amru Rabotenu Zal, Yaakov Avinu Lomi. So he he quotes Chazal as saying that Yaakov never died. And that is is kind of startling to me. I don't know about you guys. Um, it is certainly something I never learned. You know, we, we, I've always learned that like Eliyahu right, goes up in his chariot of fire, so maybe he never died. But here, Rashi is sort of saying the same thing. There's something unusual about, um, about this pasuk. And he's, he's pulling from the fact that uh, elsewhere in the Torah, when Avraham and Yishmael and Yitzchak die, it uses this word vayigva to expire, but it's coupled with the word vayamat. And here, it's not coupled with the word vayamat. So maybe something different is going on, right? And of course, despite the sort of weird textual abnormality, um, it's still very striking because in the following verses, we see Yosef fall on his father's face weeping and they make arrangements to embalm his father. Then Yosef and his brothers take Yaakov's body back to Canaan, right, for burial. Like, how could Rashi really believe that Yaakov is not dead? It, it, you know, and so I think the question really is why? Why does Rashi um, feel pulled to give this kind of explanation? Why does he want Yaakov to be alive forever? Um, like, what, and what does that mean? 
so if we look back to where Rashi pulls his um, his idea from, I think we can sort of start to peel back the layers as to why, to, to what's driving Rashi to say this. Um, so here again, we stumble on really a lovely scene in Ta'anit. Um, it's, it's the story of Rav Yitzchak and Rav Nachman who are, uh, and, and Rabbi, uh, Rav Yitzchak and Rav Nachman, who are having a meal together and they're exchanging Torah like tidbits, you know, it's like a conversation that we get to walk into. Um, and after they had eaten, um, Rav Yitzchak says to Rav Nachman, quoting Rabbi Yochanan, that Yaakov Avinu Lomi, or Yaakov has not died. <clears throat> and Rav Nachman is in surprise, as I imagine many of us felt, right? And he says, was it for not that the eulogizers eulogized him and the embalmers embalmed him and the barriers buried him? Like, what do you mean he's not dead? He did all the things that we do for a body who has died. And so Rabbi Yitzchak says to Rav Nachman, oh, I'm interpreting this verse, Mikra Ani Doresh, right, from Yirmiyahu. Um, and I pulled this pasuk out with, you know, nicer uh, punctuation for us. Um, and it's a, it's like a textual game, right? He explains that this verse juxtaposes Yaakov to his Zera, just as his seed is alive and redeemed, so too Yaakov is, right? So the Pasuk says, avdi Yaakov, um, Hashem, don't be afraid, um, Yaakov, servant of God, Va'altecha Israel, um, and don't be dismayed, Israel, right? So here Yaakov and Israel are being um, juxtaposed. Ki hineni Moshiach Merachok. Right, I will I will deliver you from far away. And, and your people, your seed, your offspring from uh, somewhere far away from the land of their captivity. And so here, right, the text is saying, oh, Yisrael and Zarecha, those are both being juxtaposed. And that somehow that means that Yaakov is alive. And so I think that I think that what the <laughs> Gemara is um, indicating is not really that Yaakov is physically alive, but that as long as Yaakov's children are out there in the world being redeemed from captivity, serving Hashem, Yaakov is alive, right? As Yaakov's legacy is alive, um, his, he is considered to be alive. Right? And I think that that's a really um, a powerful idea um, and one that I imagine drives many of us to make short and long-term resolutions and estate plannings, right, is this idea that to ask how you live on once you've left the world and how you separate this act of like the physical death of Vayigva and mate, the complete death. Um, and Yaakov seems to have unlocked that mystery for us um, because we know, right, it, it seems almost unfair that it's Yaakov. Avraham's offspring didn't die, right? Why do we say not for Avraham and not for, for Yaakov? Yitzchak's the same thing, right? You could have gone a little bit further back and said their legacy stayed on forever, right? You know, um, but yet somehow the distinction goes to Yaakov. Any questions, thoughts? I know I'm talking a lot today. Okay, I'm going to keep going then. You'll let me know if you have questions. So, <coughs> so I think that the the answer to uh, why Yaakov is is really beautiful um, in its in, like intention setting. Uh -oh, oh, there it is. Whoop, uh -oh. So on page two, we look at the at the how, right? So the why or the what is Yaakov remains immortal because his legacy lives on, um, and the the how is how he did such a thing. So. The Gemara and Baba Metzia, uh also shares sort of a shocking piece of information about Yaakov. Um, they say, Ad Yaakov lo hava chulsha, right? Um, until Yaakov, there was no illness. So this is, again, part of like a sort of a long list of things that never existed until someone, right? So until Abraham, there was no old age. Until Yaakov, there was no one who ever got sick. Um, and right, rather one would die suddenly. Ata Yaakov, Yaakov came, and he prayed for mercy and illness was brought to the world, um, allowing one to prepare for death, right? So the bold words in the Gemara translations are the like literal words and the um, non-bold is how Sepharia adds in words to make it read as an English sentence, right? So literally what, what the Gemara is saying is until Yaakov, there was no illness. And when Yaakov came and prayed for mercy, illness was like, was brought. Um, and the Pasuk that they quote is in our Parsha. 
right? Where it says, um, right? That um, they came to Yosef, the prison, the prison, sorry, the palace people, uh, wherever Yaakov was living as the father of, of Yosef and said, your father is sick. And that this is the first time that a sickness preceding death is mentioned at all in the Torah. Um, and sure enough, we see uh, even, I brought this one little pasuk from earlier from Yitzchak, right? This is right before the bracha swap that we saw that we looked at a few weeks ago, where Yitzchak says to Esav, nazakanti, right? He's like aware that he's getting older. Lo yadati yom moti, and I don't know when I'll die. And actually the Torah like goes on to count that he lives for another 20 more years after this brecha swap, right? So he thought he was gonna die just because he knew he was getting older, not because he was sick. And so he tried to maybe convey some kind of last brecha, but then he lived another 20 years, right? And so <coughs> it, there was never um, like a warning system is sort of how I would explain it. Um, illness was a way to know that death was coming and to maybe do some things to set um, yourself in motion for lasting legacy. And the, the Pirkei de Rabbi Eliezer spells it out even a little bit more strongly. Um, he here, the Pirkei de Rabbi Eliezer is, is a commentary on Tanakh but, or on the Torah, but he doesn't go linearly. And here he's talking about the seven wonders of the world. Um, and here is like a nice uh, trivia uh, piece of information, right? He, uh, he explains, right? That um, until this moment, right? From the day when we were created, no person was ever ill. If you sneezed, uh, like if you were in the marketplace or on the path, when you seized, your soul flew straight out through your nostrils and you died, um, which is kind of crazy. That is where the um, the phrase God bless you originates from, right? Is that there was this great fear of sneezing um, in our in uh, ancient worlds because there was this fear that your soul was going to fly out. There was no illness that led up to death. It was all very fast. Ad Shabbat Yaakov Avinu, until Yaakov came, v'bikesh racham yimalzot. And here he explains explicitly what Sepharia fills in for us. V'amar lifnei ha-kadosh baruch right? He says before God, ribono sh'olam, God, al tikach et nafshi mimeni, please don't take my soul from me, don't let me die, ad asher ani mitzavet et banai v'banai beti. Right, not until I have, um, here it's translated as charged, right, commanded, not until I've instructed my children and the, the children of my household. Um, right, and so now when you look back on the brachot, this is really, um, I would say it's Yaakov's um, charge to his children on how he wants them to live, what values he wants them to have, how he wants them to get back to Eretz Yisrael, um, you know, to live as a nation, fulfilling that covenantal bracha that he gives to Yosef. Um, and that he is able to do that sort of legacy planning. Um, which I think is remarkable to think that um, Yaakov not only realized that it wasn't present with his his father and his grandfather, but that he wanted it. He asked God, "Please, like, give me a, give me the like, you know, final countdown, um, so that I know to do this important thing." Knowing that it's like more poignant, maybe uh, when you're closer to your death than when you're further, as his father was. Um, and today, of course, like we can better predict our own death. Uh, we don't have to be sick first, you know, we, we can manage illnesses uh, that we don't have to die when, when we are sick. Um, but we also have more tools to make our intentions known and to create our legacies, um, right? We obviously can make wills and take care of our assets and where they'll go. And um, in this digital age, like uh, my grandmother recorded herself, someone did this project where she was recorded sharing her whole life story and sort of her hopes for the future generations, right? You could do it by video, by audio, by, by written word. Um, and so messages for our future are definitely not um, lacking, but I think this intentionality, um, we can create intentional legacy, leaving memories and lessons that will last for many generations. And so I hope that we all live long, long, healthy, beautiful lives, but that they are followed by lasting legacies that we've really intentionally planted for our children, following in the footsteps of, of Yaakov Avinu. 
wow, this was fast. I don't know if it's because I presented too quickly or because no one said anything. Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. That was very beautiful. Is the phrase Oda Vino Chai? Yeah. Yaakov, not to Avram or Yitzchak. Hmm, interesting. Yeah. Well, there is, I mean, there's so much more uncertainty in Yaakov and Yosef's life together, right? Where Yaakov thinks Yosef is dead, and then Yosef assumes Yaakov is dead, and the reunion makes it all the more powerful. Um, and yeah, I think you could read into that phrase, right? Yaakov is still alive because he has unfinished business, right? He wasn't ready to leave yet. Not that we all get that bracha to be able to get everything done before we leave, but Yaakov, obviously, a gadol, um, is able to do more. The parallel phrase is Am Yisrael Chai. So Yaakov and Yisrael, both with mm -hmm. Yeah, there's something very um, potent or, or vibrant about his still being alive. I agree, right? It gives us hope for ourselves. And that's, you know, I think that's where um, where that Gemara and Tanit is going, right? That like, just like Yaakov was brought to this reunion with Yosef, just like he was able to see his prodigal son again, right? That we too will be delivered from our captivities into our reunions and that Am Yisrael Chai is a, a reflection of that. Definitely. Um, so, you know, obviously, uh, New Year's resolutions are, you know, what you, they are what you make of them, I suppose. Uh, I've never been very good at them, but I think that that idea of sort of intention setting for how you want to be perceived in the world and to your children and, to, you know, it doesn't, well, it could, doesn't have to be children. It looks like everyone in this room happens to be blessed with children, but I think also it could be a professional legacy, right? There are lots of ways to leave your mark in the world. Um, but that it's not by accident, maybe is really like what I learned from this piece about Yaakov, is that if you're going to do it, you have to do it really thoughtfully and that, you know, breaking it up into year increments or whatever it is sometimes helps. And so that's, that's why I thought it was a funny overlap with um, the secular calendar. But, but I, I first learned this last year when it was nowhere near this time of year. So <laughs> I think that it's a powerful lesson at any point. Is anyone going on to celebrate? Uh, New Year's Eve in any way at home? Uh, not, not us. <laughs> <laughs> My husband and I will surely be asleep before midnight, <laughs> but um, we have little people who wake up very early in this house. But we. Um, How old are your children? Um, uh, my oldest is seven. Uh huh. She and Hody actually. Uh, we Becca and I used to meet up in New York when we both lived there when they were both like in their carriers. He's a little older than her. Um, my middle uh, child is a boy, he's five, and my youngest is a two-year-old girl. Oh. So yes, going to bed at midnight for midnight's sake would be foolish, but we'll, maybe we'll have a little uh, l'chaim in honor of the new year. Time doesn't hang heavy on your hands, I'm sure. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> flies by. It was, it's a lot of fun. This week was winter break for us, so we had a lot to do. Yeah. Everyone have a happy and a healthy new year. Thank you Thank to you. you as well. A happy new year and a good Shabbat, and I'll see you guys next week. The We're same thing. Thank you, Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Good Shabbos. Good Shabbos to you. Thank you.